Ever since the new season, it seems that everyone forgot how to play tank. But the truth is, you have gotten spoiled since Overwatch 2 playing tank. And as someone who has climbed tank in every single season since Overwatch Season 5 to Grandmaster or beyond in Overwatch, I'm going to tell you exactly what players are doing wrong today that is causing them to suffer so much, especially in Season 9. And while it's actually easier to climb than ever because there are bad tanks everywhere, and all you have to do is be better than that and you can climb so anyways we're gonna break it all down but we have a lot more season night guides coming so make sure you smash that like subscribe so you don't miss out on those and let's get into it but there's a huge difference between tanking in season eight or before in season nine and the tldr is that you can die now now because of the dps passive and now because healing isn't going to be something that can sustain you you can die faster now than ever before you play in the open you freaking die and this was not the case before oftentimes depending on the tank you were you could exist in open space and be perfectly fine an arisa could stand away from all sorts of cover and as long as she had line of sight to at least one support both dps could shoot at her and she could just shrug it off and that's just not the case anymore no matter what tank you're playing if you are focused you will die and as a basic rule this means that cover is more important now than ever. There needs to be a clear distinction between the times that you are challenging space or challenging an enemy out of cover and when you are next to cover or in cover. And this is because it's going to take a prolonged period of time for you to be able to get healed up if you ever get low. And this also means that the time between you pivoting between playing in cover playing safe and going for something going for a play creating some type of play making advantage on the battlefield that needs to be much faster you can't just slowly trot through open space for a very long time and expect your supports to just heal you up like before and this is one of the reasons why a lot of tanks are suffering right now because they have gotten away with not playing cover for so long that now because you absolutely need cover and you cannot rely on your supports to bail you out of bad positioning you're just dying you're just feeding and Positioning matters now more than ever for tanks, even though at the high end of play, it always did, making sure that you have maximum resources before you take any space or challenge anything. But now I'd say in the majority of ranks, players are not using cover and just dying immediately. And this is a good way to think about it. If you have full resources, your tank resources, your tank ability, full health, and your team also are not under pressure, then you can go and make a play. But you still need to make sure that you are not so far away from cover that it's going to take you more than a couple seconds maximum to get back to cover if things go wrong if you take a giant hit of damage if you get discorded or whatever the case may be it's important for you to give yourself options and the ability to back away and regain those resources now one of the things that a lot of people are going to be complaining about right now is the dps passive and zen orbs both of which cause problems for tanks because you're just going to take a lot of damage and not be able to be healed dps passive you're going to be able to be focused a lot easier you're not going to be able to be healed through it and zen discord just has you vaporized and the combination of the two feels terrible and really the core way to deal with this and deal with zens and deal with constantly being under the dps passive is a lot of the similar things that we just talked about with with what you need to do to succeed as tank in season nine and beyond is clear distinctions between cover and trying to do something you cannot just stand there and exist especially if you're a tank that doesn't have some form of mitigation even if you are even if you're a diva even if you're a sigma you still want to be allowing yourself time to regenerate your shields regenerate your dm regenerate your abilities so there are going to be key moments where you're pressing and key moments when you're regaining and stabilizing and i think outside of the cover and outside of making very definitive actions where you're not having long transitionary periods and you're not playing away from cover for too long trying to just kind of exist the big thing that's holding up a lot of tanks is the idea that they need to be the front line they need to protect the front line they need to stop the enemy tank and the reality of it is there is some truth to that depending on the matchup you don't want to allow the tank to push crazy far into your team kill your team all that stuff but there's also a certain amount of that that is out of your control a certain amount of that that is not your responsibility if your Ana is frontlining and you have to put yourself 
you know, in danger or just potentially die to try to save them, it's not your job to save them. It's more important for you to stay alive. It's more important to use your utility to try to help them, but not at the cost of your life. And I think a lot of tanks get into this mindset where they're like, if I don't bail my team out of all their mistakes, then we're going to lose. But in committing to that, you end up making the mistakes yourself and you don't get any value and you die. It's actually more important for you to nail your aggressive and proactive plays at the majority of ranks than it is to bail your team out of all their mistakes. There's just too many mistakes all around. Like, what are you supposed to do? A great example of this is like Tracer. I coach Tracer players all the time and there's like a Winston jumping their back line and they're like, man, my team keeps dying to this Winston. Am I supposed to just mark this Winston, follow this Winston around, shoot this Winston? In. and there could be an argument to do some of these things but the reality of it is at most ranks it's better for you to be the proactive threat it's better for you to trade out their backline it's better for you to successfully commit to your proactive plays and if your team die your team die but at the very least you got value all the same because you weren't just spending it trying to you know plug a hole in a sinking ship and instead you go and went and did what you wanted to do and then afterwards you can kind of stabilize from there and try to salvage the rest of the team fight with your ultimates with whatever teammates were also proactive with you and this is really where I kind of circle back to tanks because I think that a lot of players in low elo the thing that's really holding you back the most is the idea that you need to babysit your team you need to stop the front line. You need to protect the front line. You need to stop the enemy team. You need to do this and that and all these things as a tank, but it doesn't have to be as complicated as that. While you're definitely trying to push objectives, create space, and deny enemy team from playmaking, it's most important for you to do that within still good decision-making and good positioning based on your cooldown and ability use. You're not always reacting or protecting or trying to babysit or handhold your team. And if you get into that mindset, you're going to start to just lose these games where you tried very very hard to deny what the enemy team was doing the entire game but it cost you deaths it prevented you from doing anything to put pressure on their supports put pressure on their dps because you're just constantly focusing on this tank that is doing what they want to do and you're never doing what you want to do or what you're good at or what your tank is good at now another thing that's really really strange about season nine and beyond is that there is going to be times where you need to stabilize hard and what i mean by that is you've gained an advantage and before you could just heal up to full and then instantly push right get that snowball but now you need to make sure that you're taking a breath you're relaxing you're making sure that all your abilities come back online everyone gets to full health before you do anything and i understand that that's going to take some getting used to because the temple before was like we got an advantage let's push 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 but with the ability to get focused down the dps passive things are dying more than ever before and it's harder to get people back to full resources you don't want your team to like dump their cooldowns into you like an ana dumping a nade into you pumping you up getting you full and they're like oh you're cool we're full now you go and push and then your Ana gets traded because she wasted that nade, right? And and then you die because you don't have a support. And it can be a cascade where you didn't spend enough time to stabilize, so you threw a fight that you won because your team wasn't ready to push yet. You gotta find that balance, but it's important to note that it's gonna take a lot longer than it did before, so keep that mentally in check. Now, circling back to what you're supposed to do on tank, and oftentimes the best way to try to win fights, the best way to try to win games is by enabling a team play, enabling a team strategy. And this often means trying to go for a certain type of play that you want to create or helping a teammate with the plays that they want to create. And a really easy way to do this is by looking at your DPS and noting what these DPS want to do. And this is going to tell you everything you need to know. If you have certain DPS that want to play a certain way, then you should try and double down creating pressure in ways that help them make those plays. So let me give you an example. Let's say that you are on Reinhardt. And on your team, you have someone that's like a Genji. And you would think, I cannot help them do what they're going to do. They're going to do what they're going to do. I'm going to do what I'm going to do. But you can help them in a lot of ways. The biggest way that you can help them is by combining your pressure with them. Because what is a Genji going to do? He's going to dash the back lane. He's going to go for a play. He's going to probably dive a DPS or support. And any of those situations is going to require your team peel. It's going to require support attention. It's going to require the support to fight the Genji or the DPS to get peeled from the support. 
And in those moments are the times that you need to be most proactive, most aggressive. And there are going to be times when you are extra aggressive, even more than you normally should be, because all the shield health that you've been saving playing around cover, all the actual health that you've been saving by playing passive, all the support cooldowns that you've been saving by playing passive, your on it hasn't had to use her nade, your bap hasn't had to use his lamp, all these cooldowns are being saved because you're not proactive. But then the second that the Genji is proactive, so are you. Y'all are combining being proactive at the same time, and you can double down on this with extra bits of utility, an aggressive nade, an aggressive cooldown from your bap, whatever the case may be. And this means that an enemy that has to deal with this Genji, force this peel, is all of a sudden taking all this extra pressure from the enemy support and the enemy tank. And all this pressure compounds and they buckle under it. So the idea here is that you have clear moments when you are aggressive, double downing on a play, being aggressive with your team, trying to enable your team's aggressivity. But there are other moments where you're not really in a situation to be aggressive or proactive. Maybe you have a tracer that is wrapping the point to try to get behind them, but they're not there yet. You don't really want to be all in aggressive, swing in, charge in, do all this proactive stuff, and then... You have to back up to get your shield back. You have to back up to get pocketed. Your Ana use cooldowns on you. Your teammates use cooldowns on you. And then your Tracer engages. And they can just handle that as an isolated incident because your pressure wasn't matched with your Tracer's pressure. And you might be saying, okay, Mills, what about when I'm playing with DPS that don't necessarily play aggressive? They exist and they look for opportunity. And this means that you can fundamentally change how you're playing. Like if you're playing Ryan with a Widowmaker, hypothetically, you want to take aggro onto you. You want to take attention off to her, give her opportunities, but you want to make note of where her line of sight is. You also want to make sure that you give that Widow time to hit a shot. Because if the fight happens instantly, then the Widow has a very small window of time to make a difference. And you gotta think about it this way. If the Widow hasn't killed anyone or done any damage yet, then you're fighting a 4v5 with resources. The enemy team has active sources of damage and resources, and your team is down one. But once that Widowmaker gets a pick, the momentum swings heavily in your favor, right? That's the idea, is that the Widowmaker is like a timer that if you give them enough time, they'll ding. Boom, you got an advantage. So it's your job as the tank to maximize that. Make sure that you're not playing overly aggressive right off the bat. Make sure that you are not fighting like you are even in power level with the enemy team at all times because you're really not until that Widowmaker gets value. And tank players will rush an engagement really, really fast, not give their DPS the time to connect with the proper engagement. They won't time their aggression properly. They won't give their Widowmaker time to get a pick. And then they'll complain and get mad and say, my DPS sucked. They didn't do anything. But you set the terms of every single team fight. You set the terms of every single engagement. And this is super, super important. And the thing that will separate you from being an okay tank player to an amazing one is you got to think more than the other roles. If you want to be a good tank player, you have to have the highest game sense on your team. You should really have the highest game sense in the lobby. It is a thinking role. And I know that... Playing Ryan and swinging your hammer like a psychopath might not seem like it. All aim, no brain, must be a Winston main is a meme that is kind of thrown around. But really, the thing that separates okay tank players from great tank players is thinking how their actions affect their team and in what way can they play to maximize their team's effectiveness. At first, it seems simple, but it becomes crazy complex when you start to think about how your team interacts with the enemy team's DPS, what's the matchup like, what are the different resources my team has compared to the enemy team with supports, and what does that mean about how fast or slow I should take this engagement? There's a lot. There's a lot to think about as a tank, and I'm not saying it's easy, but you will get rewarded if you stop locking it in and running it down every single game and taking every single engagement the same way, just because you know the default play patterns of how to play a certain tank doesn't mean you go for the same play patterns every single game. Everything should be different. How you're playing, how you're approaching, how you're swinging, how you're fighting should always be different because the factors are never the same. Who you're up against, who what's on your team is never the same. The maps you're playing on, they're never the same. So you can't just autopilot these maps and expect to win. You can't 
or else you're just coin flipping each and every game. And unfortunately, I can only go surface level on teaching people how to get better on tank because a lot of it is going to be matchup specific and main specific. And I can't go over that unless we're in a one-on-one -on -one session. Speaking of which, I do have Patreon one-on-one -on -one sessions finally open. So if you want some private coaching on tank and you want to climb, you can definitely book a session there. But otherwise, just ask me a question down below and I'll do my best to answer it. Thank you so much for coming by. I hope you enjoyed the video. I'll see you next time.